uh, that was on an outpatient basis, Medicare would pay 80% uh, of that $1,000 or $800, you would be responsible for $200 uh, of that bill uh, after you meet your annual deductible. Um, there are programs that, again, uh, help pay for these costs, and Pamela will talk about some of those later. Uh, in addition to that, uh, and uh, I'll get to this in a second, um, there are supplemental insurance plans that supplement coverage and uh, costs uh, under Medicare Parts A and B. If you choose original Medicare, you can also choose a Medicare supplement plan that will help to fill in some of the coverage gaps and that will help to, to cover uh, some of the costs um, that you would otherwise have to pay. They have their own premiums and we will talk about those in a second. So uh, should I keep or sign up for part A? Generally, absolutely yes. So uh, again, for, the, for almost everyone, part A coverage is free. Uh, you would get it automatically if you're already receiving social security or a railroad retirement benefit. Um, However, and if you or your spouse are actively working and covered by an employer plan, you should make sure that you contact uh, your employer for information, uh, did, uh, but also to contact Social Security and sign up within that seven month window that Ginger talked about. Um, there's, no, there's no penalty for signing up for Medicare Part A. There is a penalty if you don't sign up in the time period, uh, and then uh, you need to do so later. So. Um, this is a pretty easy decision. Um, when you become eligible, uh, sign up for Part A. Uh, what about uh, Medicare Part B? Um, well, this, this depends, and here's sort of where your choices start uh, coming in. Um, you, can, you can make that initial choice between choosing original Medicare or choosing a Medicare Advantage plan. Um, you can also uh, if you are employed and you have employer coverage, uh, you should, uh, you may or may not uh, want to choose Part B. You may want to keep your employer coverage and you can delay signing uh, up for Part B because you have qualifying coverage. Um, again, uh, you're paying a monthly premium for Part B. Um, there are, you know, other costs as we mentioned. Um, and your coverage uh, with your current plan may be different, uh, less than or better than the Part D, Part B coverage that may be available to you. So it really is important for you to talk with your employer uh, about uh, your plan, talk with your current uh, plan uh, about the type of coverage that is available to you under that plan, um, but uh, you may want to uh, choose Part B even if you are covered. Um, and uh, again, uh, if you delay, um, you may incur a penalty if you don't if you don't have qualifying coverage and you don't sign up uh, when you should. Um, in order to uh, buy a Medigap policy, that's one of those supplemental policies that I talked about, you, you must have Part B. So you must sign up for Part A and Part B in order to purchase uh, a Medigap policy. Uh, if you want to make that choice and uh, go under Part C or the Medicare Advantage plan, uh, again, uh, that is automatically included. A and B are a package deal uh, with the private Medicare Advantage plans. Uh, if you're eligible for TRICARE, the military uh, insurance uh, program coverage, uh, and if your employer uh, requires that you have it um, uh, once, you, once you turn 65. So in some cases, employers may say, hey, you have to sign up for Medicare if it's uh, available to you and you find out that your regular coverage will only be supplemental or will stop entirely. Um, Again, with veterans uh, benefits, uh, it's optional to sign up for Part B, but 
uh, you do pay a penalty if you sign up late or if you don't sign up during your initial enrollment period, uh, and coverages may be different. Uh, the Medigap policy is that supplemental insurance policy that I spoke about. Supplemental plans uh, only apply if you choose original Medicare. Uh, so uh, they are sold by private health insurance companies. And as I mentioned, they fill in the gaps for original Medicare. Uh, they cover, they'll cover deductibles, some co-insurance, co-payments, and they'll also provide coverage for travel uh, outside of the United States. Um, it's really important to remember that this is an option for you. Some of these plans, uh, there are different tiers of these types of plans. Um, in Wisconsin, uh, we have some special rules around the Medicare supplement uh, policies. Uh, so in some ways in Wisconsin, you're a little more protected in terms of the type of coverage that uh, you're required to receive with these supplemental plans, but they do vary um, and uh, they do have their own premiums in place. So you're gonna be paying uh, for that Medigap policy, but oftentimes that Medigap policy will uh, provide additional, um, uh, will help you not have to incur separate bills as you go down uh, the road. You'll pay your premium um, and it may be more costly for you, um, but you might not face the limits that you have under original Medicare. Okay, so, um, and you know, some decisions that you'll have to make are, do you have other supplemental uh, coverage? Um, can you afford uh, the deductibles and co-payments? Um, and what is the premium cost? So uh, when can you buy a Medigap policy? Uh, it generally, the, the answer is um, whenever the uh, Medigap plan uh, will offer it to you, um, but uh, your open enrollment period for um, Medigap plans begins when you're 65 or older and you enrolled in Part B. So if you delay enrollment in Part B, you can still get a supplemental plan, uh, even though you know you enrolled in uh, Part A at the time you were supposed to. When Once you enroll in Part B, then you have six months from that time uh, to also choose a supplemental plan. Um, and uh, at, during that time, plans must sell you a plan. Uh, but again, as I stated, most plans will sell you a plan outside of that period as well. Um, they don't have to under the law, but most will. Uh, and then Medicare Advantage plans. Uh, these are health uh, options, as I mentioned, uh, by private insurers. This, uh, this is an innovation in Medicare to try to open up uh, the field and to have uh, private insurers uh, pool uh, some of the costs under the Medicare program. Uh, and the way they do that generally is by uh, uh, placing individuals in a preferred provider network or a hate health maintenance organization um, that limits the number of providers that uh, you can see in some way, uh, either geographically or by um, a type of provider, a network within a particular geographic area. Um, and so, you know, one difference between original Medicare and Medicare Advantage, for example, is that any provider that uh, accepts Medicare, uh, your coverage, you're covered under original Medicare wherever you are in the United States. Uh, in Medicare Advantage, um, there are in-network coverage and out-of-network coverage, and that out-of-network coverage can be uh, uh, extremely, uh, potentially extremely expensive to you. So um, that's just one of the differences between Medicare Advantage and original uh, of Medicare. Um, you're still in Medicare, you still have all the same types of rights and protections. You still get Part A and Part B coverages. Uh, they have to be the same uh, as original Medicare, um, but they also may include some perks. Um, uh, extra benefits like vision or dental that are not included uh, in original Medicare. Um, they may include uh, prescription drug coverage that again you would buy supplementally with original Medicare under Part D that Ginger will talk about in just a second. Um, and their benefits uh, and cost sharing may be different. 
So they will they will set their own premiums, their own co-payments and uh, co-insurance provisions, and uh, they require quite a bit of uh, shopping um, uh, to compare different plans to find uh, one that really works best for you and your uh, yourself. Um, so again, um, they the advantage some advantages are they do provide comprehensive coverage, many including the Part D drug coverage. So it's all in one plan. Um, you don't have multiple plans that you're working with, um, but they you know generally require you to use a network, either PPO or H HMO. You have to make sure that your providers uh, are in that network, uh, especially if you have some type of specialty. Um, uh, you need some type of specialty care. Um, you still have to pay the Part B premium and the monthly plan premium, um, and uh, you can only leave that plan during certain periods. Uh, you uh, Medigap policies don't make any sense with Medicare Advantage because you don't need that supplemental coverage. So of course you can't, you, you wouldn't purchase a Medigap plan. Those are uh, supplemental to original Medicare. Um, but you do have to have, again, Part A and Part B to join because they are Part A and Part B coverages. Um, when can you enroll in the Medicare Advantage plan? Again, during that same seven month initial enrollment period, your basic you know, bottom line choice is between a Medicare Advantage type plan and original Medicare. Also during the open enrollment period. Um, so that's October 15th to December 7th every each year. Uh, and then coverage uh, for that uh, that is for coverage the next following year. Um, and uh, depending on uh, certain changes, uh, you may be able to join a Medicare Advantage plan at a, at a time outside that open enrollment period uh, once you're uh, in Medicare, uh, depending on change of circumstances like a, a loss of a job or other benefits. So, um, I think uh, that's uh, that's it. Generally, I want to mention real quick. It wasn't uh, in the slide, but um, uh, not everything is covered uh, in Medicare, uh, is particularly in original Medicare. And um, you know, you just want to make sure um, that uh, the coverages that you need are uh, included. But most dental care. Uh, eye exams related to prescribing glasses, dentures, cosmetic surgery, massage therapy, routine physical exams, acupuncture, hearing aids and exams for fitting them, and again, long-term care, as I mentioned, all are not included uh, in Part A and Part B. Medicare Advantage plans may include, may add on some of those services uh, within their plan coverage, so you have to look you know, carefully to see uh, what those coverage uh, uh, adders might be and if that's something you'd like. Okay, Ginger. Okay, thank you, Dan. Next slide, please. Okay, we're going to do a very brief overview of Part D Medicare prescription drug coverage. Medicare Part D is a voluntary program always been voluntary. As, as a matter of fact, the actual name of the program as um, passed into law back in 2003 is the Voluntary Prescription Drug Plan. It is available for all people who are enrolled in Medicare and it is provided through private health insurance, uh, private insurance companies who sponsor <coughs> Medicare prescription drug plans and also through Medicare Advantage plans. A lot of the times when you see these uh, plans, you'll see Medicare Advantage plans um, that have the same name or parent company as the Medicare prescription drug plans. And that is because a lot of these very um, well-known plans are the ones who sponsor Medicare prescription drug coverage. Next slide, please. How